Hey guys, welcome to game three between Rancor and Grass. Bottom right hand corner we have Rancor starting as the Red Zerg. Upper left hand corner we have Grass starting as the Blue Protoss. A good luck, have fun from Grass. Being very manner, knowing that he's got a match ahead of him. One game apiece from both these guys. And if last game was any indication, it is going to be a fun series. This is Shakura's Temple. A little bit more of a macro-oriented map. I do wonder if this is going to play more towards Rancor's favor in his style of going for more of that three hatch, the, the three hatch Hydralisk pressure contain situations. Grast. We'll see what he's up to. He, I felt like he had the early High Templar. It was just in the mid game. It didn't seem like he had the ability somewhere in the mid game. He didn't establish map control is almost what I feel. And so he wasn't able to get that third base. It's almost I almost feel like if you can get positioning around those bridges and when Zerg comes, you just side storm the bejesus out of them and kind of keep an eye on that back corner and just punish them. Anytime they're coming across, it just ends up being, but that, I mean, that's easier said than done. We are seeing a nine pool for Rancor. Interestingly enough, I don't think this is going to pay out for him because oftentimes when you're going nine pool, what you're hoping to do, yeah, going nine pool extractor. So he, I take it back. Going to go ahead and do a cancellation there to get an extra uh, drone snuck in there. But he does want to get the early Zerglings out. This is unusual for him. Usually he's gone for more of the early economic builds or pseudo-economic builds. But if he was looking to go ahead and deny an actual expansion, his Overlord scouting here to the bottom left-hand corner first, and he's now moving that drone scout. Well, actually, this will be interesting because the it comes down to how heads up is Rancor. Because he's going to move up to the upper right. He's going to see this probe coming across from the north. And so that will give him an indicator of where he should send his Zerglings as soon as he sees that this natural expansion is empty. Three grouping of Zerglings being produced. No gas, so it's not going to be speed Zerglings. This is going to be double gateway from Grast in the meantime, though. So he's gone for double gateway opener. Grast now walking in. That probe is just going to get ignored. So regardless of Rancor's opener, Grast is going to have the kind of auto build to kind of counter this. Making his way across. And this has to be a little bit, <laughs> this got to be a little bit disappointing for Rancor. Going up, seeing the additional gateways. I think he wanted to see that forge first. That is going to send those Zerglings home. He's got that natural expansion now being built. But Grast has that probe hiding in that corner. And we've seen Grast think about being a little bit sneaky. Here and there. Let's. I'll try to keep an eye right there to see if he's going to plop a pylon down, do something interesting from from there. Grass, upon seeing that pool opener, is going to go ahead and seal the rest of his front door with some pylons. With the zealots, really clog this and go ahead and probably sit back. Actually, he's distance mining with this probe to go ahead and create a blockade. Rank warp moving the zerglings up. Looks like he was able to get a kill. Let's see if we can find the zergling that got it. Where are you, zergling that got the kill? There's the one. Killed the probe. First blood. A lot of Zerglings flooding forward. Grass continuing to produce a lot of Zealots. So, and not saving up for that Nexus. So it looks like he does want to follow this up with some aggression. Here's the thing. The Zerglings, with that threat on the front door, the Zealots need to stay. It's kind of one of those things where if you can peel off some Zerglings, they can sweep around and maybe do some damage and be annoying that direction. But Rancor now knows... That he needs to get some sunken colonies down. Oh, going to hatch. Two hatch to lair. Working on zergling speed, producing some additional zerglings. So I think this is going to be the deciding moments in the match right here. Is his can grasp punish? Is he going to continue? It looks like he's just going to try to do it with the zelts he has on the ground. But if Rancor can push this back and keep him out of his main, that would be absolutely huge. Zealots looking for an opportunity. This is a lot of Zerglings. It's going to come down to Concavity. Zealots do beat Zerglings one-on-one. -on -one. The Zealots looking to go ahead and engage on the main. Now Rancor engaging. The, a couple Zerglings delayed, and that could be the difference here. Some nice micro trying to lead them back. Grass boxed into a corner. Another Zealot coming in from the north, and it looks like the Zerglings are going to be able to clean up all the Zealots here. Is that Zealot going to be able to get in the main to see what... Trying to get a drone kill is not even going to be able to get that, but is going to be able to sneak into that mineral line to force additional Zergling kills. Rancor trying to be a little bit creative about it. Is now starting to filter some Zerglings back around to get 
double under attack, but now all of those Zerglings are down. Grast is effectively boxed into his base. Is still pouring out the Zealots. Okay, yeah, he needs to put those on defense. This Nexus is coming up very late, and the Spire is already on the way. This is the problem for Grast is because he did not get that scout, because he did not inflict a lot of damage. He effectively has zero anti-air. Zero anti-air, so even a Mutalisk. Actually, I wonder if he could just straight up build cannons underneath a Mutalisk. But point being, enough Mutalisks are going to be out that I don't think Grast is going to have what it takes to defend this. So all the Zerglings have to do is make sure that the Zealots don't sneak by and do something catac cataclysmic underneath. Looking for Anchor to go ahead and grab his additional gas here. Spire just about finished. He, he has saved up nearly 500 gas, so it is possible he'll be able to produce that 5 Mulesk, and that's 5 Mulesk can one-shot a probe. But it looks like this is going to turn into potentially a build order loss for Grass. Still no cannons defending the Nexus as well. First Mulesk in production. Looking for additional Mulesk. There it is. Four Mulesks, and I think that is sufficient. Barring a miracle. Additional cannons for Rancor. Going to go ahead and try to seal up his front. The one thing that Rancor could botch this win with is if he just decides to engage right on top of these cannons in these gateways and tries to just punch through the front. But we are... There's... Wow. So this is the Stargate, as the Mutalisks are already going to be on the way. Level 1 weapons upgrading as well. So the Mutalisks are already out in flight, and the Stargate's not even halfway finished. Brutal. And if Rancor continues to produce Mutalisks, it is just going to accelerate that demise, and it looks like they are headed towards the main. Pylons are warping in, but I sit on a tune in that corner, but no cannons. Maybe Grass can save his natural expansion by placing some cannons around there and buy himself some time. But he, upon seeing these Mulesks, his heart just has to drop. Probe's getting obliterated. Getting chased towards that natural. And it is just, oof. It is a probe massacre. First Corsair being built, but that one pylon can be taken down by these Mulesks. And that will be that. It looks like there is a cannon trying to warp into that natural expansion. That's getting wiped out. Zealots are now moving out in large numbers. So Rancor does need to micro at multiple locations at once. As long as he focuses on this cannon, though, that should be that. And I don't think Grast is going to win it through seven Zealots alone. Creep Colony is up. He also has two Mutalisks overhead. Is morphing that. The Zerglings just have to wait for those Zealots to engage and then re-engage from there. The Mutalisks diving in. So Grast trying to make a game of it. But he's down to 17 probes. And when you have fewer workers than your Zerg opponent, that is never a good scenario. Upon seeing that mute, those Mutalisks on the front, it's going to go ahead and back off from there. And the Mutalisks continuing to feast on probes over that natural expansion. The Corsair, now that there's two Corsairs up, looks like they're going to try to engage. This is going to buy a little bit of a reprieve. Let's see if they engage one-on-one, -on -one, though. Yeah, actually not engaging in a group. So those, that Corsair are going to get wiped out as well. The Zealots waiting for an opportunity along that corner. Maybe waiting for a third Corsair. I don't even know that he can afford it. Trying to re-engage. More Mutalisks is going to be there to reinforce. And once these Mutalisks are here, that should be GG. Eight Mutalisks. Eight Mutalisks versus two Corsairs and a Dragoon. Uh, not fair fighting odds here. Might want to focus the Corsairs because of the splash damage first. Actually, mostly ignoring the Corsairs and just focusing on the probes underneath. Seven probes left for Grass. There's GG. Oof. Game two. Comfortably going to Rancor. Or sorry, game three. Comfortably going to Rancor. Rancor is now up 2-1 over Grass. This is, I believe, a best of seven. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.